Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Chanel and we're going to be discussing the rise and fall of teen fashion. This has become a popular discussion amongst women from identifying people who are currently in their 20s and 30s. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the beginning, the boom, and the bankruptcy of teen fashion. If you're in that age group, you probably remember your preteens and teens being bright colors, fashion catalogs, and just the bliss of being a teen. 20 years ago, teen fashion was a booming industry that's future seemed like it was infinitely growing. Now in 2023, the industry is quite literally non-existent. When doing research to find the first teen fashion clothing brand or store, it was hard to find an accurate and conducive answer. The closest conclusion that I came to was Abercrombie & Fitch. It was originally founded in 1892 and it was originally an elite outdoorsman store. It outfitted elite people like Theodore Roosevelt Safari and what I thought was quite interesting and just a sh shocking fact was Ernest Hemingway was a regular customer at Abercrombie & Fitch at the time and apparently the gun involved in his death in 1961 was purchased from Abercrombie & Fitch. Abercrombie was sold in 1988 to The Limited, eventually leading to the focus of the teen customer. The Limited, later renamed L Brands, then renamed Bath & Body Works Inc., owned some of the most popular teen stores that we saw, like Limited 2, Abercrombie & Fitch, and Victoria's Secrets Pink. I'm gonna say the first teen clothing store is unknown. If you have any information or know of the first teen clothing store, comment down below so you can educate us. The teen fashion space began in the late 1980s and into the 2000s. This time period birthed some of the most popular teen fashion brands and trends to ever exist. It also housed the careers of some of the most popular teen entertainers, from Britney Spears and Raven Simone to Brandy Norwood and the Olsen Twins. These teen fashion brands took advantage of the opportunity to have teen entertainers sell teen clothing. The Limited 2 had a Lizzie McGuire collection and also special events surrounding the show. Wet Seal had Ashley Simpson, Aeropostal had Bethany Moda, and the list goes on and on. Due to the gap in the market, these brands took the opportunity to be at the right place at the right time. Prior to these decades, teens didn't have specific stores or departments marketed solely to them. For brands like Delia's, they began because no one else was speaking to that group of kids. If you're unfamiliar with Delia's, they created the first teen fashion catalog. I believe the first issue was in 1996 or 1994. Prior to this, most fashion catalogs were aimed to women in their 30s and 40s, 50s. The Delia's catalogs made it accessible for teen girls to shop for cool and unique pieces from the comforts of their homes. The Delia's catalogs caused the plethora of fashion catalogs that we saw from other teen fashion brands to create the same shopping experience. With the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century, business was booming for brands like Limited 2, Delia's, Hollister, Abercrombie, and Anchor Blue, and so many more in ways that we never saw before. This new space of the fashion industry allowed tweens and teens to express themselves and this expression of oneself allowed for them to connect to their peers. Being dropped off by your mom at the mall and going around to every store with your friends trying on clothes was an experience and that experience drove emotion and those emotions drove sales for these stores. Or you'd be watching your favorite teen movie and the characters in the movie would be going shopping like fashion montage and you would get inspired. You would want to dress like your favorite teen star. That also drove sales for these brands. For example, Hannah Montana, Miley Stewart, Miley Cyrus was not the first person to wear a spaghetti strap tank top over a t-shirt. But because she wore that so consistently in Hannah Montana, the show, fans of the show started to do the same in fashion that was sold at stores like Limited 2 replicated that trend. This isn't a fashion example, but if you lived between the times of 2009 to 2013, then you are subject to financial compensation for having to endure seeing the infamous Justin Bieber bowl haircut on any male of any age. The impact that this one hairstyle had on so many males, mainly white males, needs to be studied. 
because how did every time you turn a corner you see about 10 people rocking that hairstyle maybe for good reason but the impact is just not here anymore we've seen teen fashion take the world by storm but we have to ask how did it disappear so quickly many of these stores face controversy for the alleged discriminative and offensive behaviors i'm saying alleged because i'm not trying to get sued i'm not trying to have anybody come for me saying this is defamation or libel or slander or whatever no this is all this is alleged okay there's movies documentaries about these topics these behaviors may have been the contributing catalyst of the destruction of these brands and the industry as a whole it is the abundance of internet access and smartphone accessibility most social media apps like tiktok require you to be at least 13 years old when i was first like introduced to social media it used to be you had to be 18 years old and now it's dropped to 13. say you want to use these apps but you're 11. all you have to do is change your birthday to whatever is at least 13 years old and boom you're in it's that easy these apps usually don't have any like way to verify or make sure that your birthday is accurate and i think that's on purpose because they want more people to use their apps to drive in more customers to change how society is viewing things but that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day this lower age requirement makes it easier for tweens and teens to experience the positive and negative aspects of social media they're exposed to content that is marketed and aimed to adults by adults and think that this is what they should be doing because they have no other people close to their age that are providing entertainment and inspiration that is deemed appropriate for them. That's why a lot of these big influencers are very young because most of their audience is also very young. The young audience is just gravitating to the people who are close to their age. These teenagers are not watching content that is from like a 40 year old content creator. Usually it's people that are in their early 20s. TV shows about middle schoolers don't even exist anymore. There's no iCarly, there's no Hannah Montana, no Sweet Life is Zack and Cody, none of it. It's just completely desolate. These kids literally have no other choice but to dress and behave like adults because of the media and the content that's pushed to them. This shift towards the elimination of teens in society and media ultimately led to the elimination of the teen fashion industry. If you're a teen right now, take this from a Gen Z adult. I'm 23 by the way. Enjoy your teen years. Make the most of them because when you're an adult and you have to do adulting things, you're gonna be like, dang, I wish I was a kid with no responsibilities, no bills, no stress. Like, you just wish you could just be free. You know, just enjoy the bliss. Obviously, I know, like, teens just want to grow up. But if you try and enjoy your teen years, I think you'll really appreciate them. Try and create positive moments. Here's a question to ask yourself. Will preteen or teen fashion ever come back? If you made it to this point in the video, you should definitely subscribe by clicking here. And you should check out my last video where I show you not so typical Valentine's Day outfits. And they're just outfit inspiration in general.